morning guys back out here at Cairn Creek today Ross County Fair is in the books you saw it last episode on that autocross we put on man was it a good time it turned out perfect absolutely perfect so other than the autocross we do a few other things out the fair we got the horses out there and stuff and then we have the campers so Kim and uh, at least Kim and Cruzy camp out there all week so the camper was gone I had full intentions remodeling our camper area out here at Cairn Creek but it just didn't happen we had way too many things going on so while the camper was gone vacant from Cairn Creek, which doesn't happen very often, I wanted to take the opportunity to remodel this area. Didn't happen. Been wanting to do this pretty much since I put the camper in here a couple years ago, got the infrastructure in here. So let's show you what we're gonna to do today. Usually the camper sits right here. You can actually see the ruts where the back tire has sunk into the mud. And uh, this was just asphalt we had left over. We brought in here, graded out with the bulldozer, I believe. And that's been our surface, our low budget surface for now. It's worked well, but it's time for change. With the nose of the camper here, this creates a spot back here. It's just absolutely nasty. It's, it's a pain in the butt to maintain and just aesthetically not pleasing. So we're gonna rectify the situation. We're gonna build a little wall right here around that curb behind that hydrant with retaining wall blocks that was left over from another project. So you're gonna get to see something new. Let's show you what we're gonna do and we'll try to take you step by step on this whole project and maybe a whole concrete, new concrete pad here. It's always key, the most critical part of this is getting your foundation correctly level at the right grade. And that's what we're doing right now. We've got our setup to where we'll be a little bit lower than our finished concrete. And then we'll just dig out and make sure we're, we're below our finished grade so we can get some gravel in there to compact and smooth out. Alright, so now we have our white dots. That gives us a constant level grade all around this radius. Now I'm going to come back and transfer each dot to get us a screed point. Like so. Now that we got our base level, we're gonna run the plate compactor over it, being careful not to tilt it one way or another so we can keep that nice and level. Now, I don't think it's looking too bad. laid out on our blocks. Now we gotta get some drainage pipe behind it. Colby and Coco's gonna get that in there and uh, we'll put some gravel over top of it. They're struggling with the pipe. Teamwork boys, teamwork. I have built many retaining walls in my time out in the construction industry and one thing I know is certain is most time walls fail because of improper drainage. Guys, you gotta get good drainage behind these walls. All right, well, swell's pretty much done except for the caps. Only took us about four hours to do this much. Uh, just having the right equipment makes a big, big difference, no doubt. Uh, I know you can tackle this with a shovel and stuff. Uh, the equipment just makes a big difference having uh, material here on site for the most part. Unfortunately, I don't have enough caps to do this. I think I had seven or eight caps. It's going to take closer to 40 caps. Uh, so we're going to keep moving forward. We're not going to finish this wall today to do those caps. Definite decision has been made that this old asphalt has got to go. We've got to get some concrete in here. But where the actual camper goes, I just need to do concrete. I need to peel up this asphalt and do concrete. While I'm doing this, let's get this thing done, do it right, and be done with this up here. Uh, and then all we should have to do up here is just spray weeds occasionally in this gravel area. 
uh, this top part, I am going to go ahead and start shaping out with the Traco, try to get it done. Even though we don't have the cap, uh, probably put some bigger stone and maybe some landscaping up top. Really bring this little project together, don't you think? It was kind of more fun building autocross tracks. But this is definitely improving our property, and that's uh, that's my main jab. That's my main dig in life. Let's go. I was getting all excited about my project here, costing not much money, and then we got into gravel, more gravel. Of course, we're going to have concrete now. Guys, I'm going to call this a productive day. What a day it's been. Uh, unfortunately, my little project that was a budget saver I was so proud of has turned into not a budget saver. It's going to end up costing quite a bit of money. Uh, I think I'm looking at 23 yards of concrete. I've got to buy caps for that wall, our gravel, probably throw some other bells and whistles, maybe some plants up on the top side of the wall. So it started out perfect. It started out nice and cheap, just like we like it. And unfortunately, it's going the other direction, but it's going to be nice. I'm terrible at doing stuff like this. I get into a project, and, and the more I work at it, the more I think, well, let's go ahead and do this, do that. Let's do it one time, do it right. And make it awesome. So I'm hoping I can pour this Friday. We've got a busy, busy work week. If we bust tail the next couple days at work, we should be able to pour this maybe Friday afternoon. That's the goal. Not a bad pour. It should be pretty easy. Maybe me and Coco might have my cousin help us get down. Be an easy pour. That's where we're at right now. So thanks for watching up to this point. Uh, we're doing a really good channel. You guys are awesome. I hope you enjoy what we're doing at Karen Creek. We'll see you on pour day. day y'all it's finally here friday afternoon it's one o'clock we got the concrete truck on site we got this all compacted and put in place things are looking well we got my ace in the hole back here i got colby oak coconut and cruise ready to pull the come along we got seymour from ross county ready mix probably their best driver out there i tell you that we pour with him all the time he's going to treat us good i hope on this hot summer afternoon concrete on the farm let's go you got 10 yards all right, we had him add some water. It was too dry. That slump that he poured, the, th the thickness of it, the stiffness of it, I guess, would have been okay for a little sidewalk or something, but uh, the limited help we have today, me pulling that screed board, I gotta get some moisture in it. I know that's, uh, we're, we're not putting too much in it, but it's, it's gonna make things a lot easier for me today. Check out the bull plate action. This is our first chance to get the rocks kind of settled in. And as you can tell, we're going opposite of the way that we screed it to try to knock down. And it's the first chance to level out this concrete surface. It kind of vibrates, pushes the, the rocks down, brings a little cream up. We'll probably do this twice. And then we'll use the Fresno float. And we'll go over the Fresno float once we get to that. Just ran out of concrete. That was 10 yards. Looks like we'll have enough when he comes back. That took about an hour to get down. But it's hot and it's setting up fast. Back and forth. There you go. Cruises concrete construction. All right, we're hitting the Fresno float right now. And this will be our last pass, last effort to make a smooth surface before the broom hits it. This takes place to use the knee board. Truck two, here we go.
Here at our 140 acre piece of paradise, not only are we so lucky to have this land, but we're lucky to have the knowledge, the equipment, and our health to come together and do projects just like this. Throwing down some cure and seal on this concrete. It's so hot out, this will help slow down the curing process, which will make it a little bit stronger. You guys probably want to talk about why I didn't have rebar or mesh in here. We can talk about that here in a minute. Got this bad boy whipped out right now. Real quick, we'll go over rebar and wire reinforcements and my opinions on it. So I've poured thousands of square feet of concrete. There's a time and place, I believe, for rebar and wire mesh. Now, of course, this is my opinion. The inspector would probably agree with me on this, but anyways. We do put rebar and wire enforcement in concrete in certain applications, such as uh, if we're spanning a, an old trench or if we've got a, a deck of some sort. I believe in flat pads, properly prepared base is your key and then saw cutting it right away is key also. We're hoping to saw cut this tonight actually. I've also torn out a lot of concrete in my day, older concrete that's that's failed. And if it's got wire in it, 99% of the time the wire is on the bottom. Now to use wire and use it correctly, you've got to bridge it up so that it floats in the concrete when you pour it. So most of the time that people install wire, you try to pull it up and it gets tramped back down. It's a waste of time, waste of time and money. Like I said, I've got tons of concrete in my shops, sidewalks, I've poured tons of concrete. We stand behind our work and we only do wire if the customer requests it. That's the skinny of it. So we got Ward from Wisdom here tonight with Rondo. He's talking about the concrete. We had a couple flaws out there. And you know what Rondo says? You can't see it from my house. <laughs> Landscaping day. Today is Sunday, finally. We poured this Friday, and I'm gonna do something I tell every customer not to do, and that's not to drive on it for like six days. But as you can see, somebody stuck my truck on the concrete, and we're gonna move the camper on the concrete. We're gonna wrap this project up today. We're at the landscaping part of it. There goes the budget again. The good news is we got the Inspector Rondo on site to help us with the layout. We got crews on site to dig holes. Can't get much easier than this, guys. Let's get digging, Dad. <laughs> On the hit list today, we have Miss Kim's favorite plants, hostas, boxwoods, and a hydrangea. She loves them. Fantastic, right? Fantastic. We got this new camper path all done. It looks excellent. It makes me feel so good. The neighbor Billy says yesterday, you went through all this work to make it look pretty back there, and then you just bring a camper in and block it. Well, you know what? I noticed it. It's always drove me crazy coming up here and working in that area. You saw it beforehand. It was just a hot mess. And when my mind's at ease, I'm more productive. It's common sense, folks. Tell me not. Let's review this project real quick. Let's check it out. Let's talk about it. First of all, the concrete. This concrete did whoop my tail the other day. I may have not portrayed that earlier in the video, but it really, really hurt me. I was, uh, there were some parts of the video I couldn't show because I was cussing them boys. It just felt like they were not on their game. It was 89 degrees, concrete was setting up, second truck was late, a lot of things went wrong. But as Rondo says, You can't see it from my house. Actually, I can't see it from my house, so we'll call that a win. So we just turned this area into big pimping style, so my sister-in-law and Derek, Megan and Derek, you guys are gonna step up your A game. You're cripping my style, man, come on. All right, so we got this landscape and I feel really good about this project now. I feel how clean it's gonna be, how easy it's gonna be to maintain. I'm really in love with how this project turned out. 
and really happy that I got to spend it uh, for the most part with the boys uh, helping me on this project. You know, that's something they should remember forever. This concrete pad, this wall, that's all stuff that's going to be here when I'm gone and they're probably in charge of Cairn Creek. Because that's probably all stuff that when I'm long gone, this concrete, that wall, it's still going to be here for somebody else to take care of. And hopefully they'll remember that hot day in August. We poured this concrete, we laid that wall. Like I say, I hear Cairn Creek, it's all about telling stories for generations to come. One of the main reasons why we like to do this is to document the progress we make here at Cairn Creek. We're not afraid of work. We're not afraid to have fun. That's how we roll Cairn Creek, guys. And although the budget was totally blown to smithereens, I still feel good about it. I hope you guys do too. I appreciate you watching. Please leave a comment. Hit that like button. It just helps our channel out. We actually got promoted on Brian Brown's channel yesterday. And we jumped up a couple hundred subscribers in one day. Uh, hopefully some of the guys, if you're new to the channel, you came over from Brian's. Brian, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys coming. Cairn Creek community is always going strong. We've got cool stuff going on. I'm telling you what, we've got the wood miser sawmill, track hose, dump trucks, bulldozers, skid loaders, and we've got horses too, but we don't showcase them too much, guys. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us. Cairn Creek from Southern Ohio. I'm Jeremy. We are over and out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs>